Welcome and thanks for joining us for another season of Scope. Ground has broken for the people of Ihu in Kikori District, Gulf Province, as they welcome the opening of the Ihu to Petoe Road after 45 years of waiting. The road that is set to open up opportunities. Ihu is one of the four local level governments, including East and West Kikori, and Baimuru, known as West Port. There are more than 80 wards in Ihu LLG. <laughs> The people of Ihu in Gulf Province over the last 40 years have risked their lives traveling by sea to Kerama, which has caused thousands of lives, and the road link is a great relief. The road was launched recently with two PMV trucks donated to service the people, making its maiden trip from Petoy to Vailala River at the West Banks on January 26. The roadworks is currently in progress. So this road has uh, set in the uh, Kauri or East Ihu for the last 45 years. And both my board and I, when I came into uh, becoming a MP as well as Minister of State, we uh, we uh, had a strong desire to connect this road. And so we connected the road. It has been opened up from uh, Keru Bridge, where it has been sitting, to reaching Wailala River. Wailala River is uh, where Ihu uh, LLG headquarters is based. And um, this is exciting for our people, not only for Kauris, but also Popos and Oropos, including Baimurus. We have Baimuru president with us. We have a woman's rep from KDDA, is from Baimur, who is sitting in front of me, uh, with me. Uh, so, including uh, Kikori, and my DA is from Kikori, so it's really a kind of uh, all of us sharing the, the excitement. Why is it significant? This road, for the first time, open opportunities for our people. In the past, most of our people from this side, including the Popos, Orokolos, Baimurus, Kikoros, we have to exit Kerma by, by sea using outboard motors. And over the years, thousands of lives have been lost. And it also became uh, what well, has been very expensive exercise. So you're talking about from Popo and uh, Oropolo up uh, yeah, you're talking about 60 kina. Depends on who's charging it, it could be higher. And as far as uh, lower here, it's the same. Our people to the east, who were president comes, at least the road, part of the road was already constructed and has enabled them to move. But one of the most difficult issues is that our mothers have been uh, uh, carrying their load, their garden produce, their sago bags from wherever they are, all the way to Kerama. Often you're talking about five hours. Mothers have to get up four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning in order to walk when it is cold. All of us sitting here, we know. It's our mothers and our wives and our two, our daughters that have experienced that. I've had my own first-hand experience of this. The 2000 election, I got hit by wave and I overnighted at uh, Arai Miri. Next minute I was trying to go out and I kind of sat on the beach when sun was coming up and I saw dots appearing to the west. Dots came, came and eventually I found that they were mothers. They carry huge uh, bags of uh, sago in their billums and on top of that they were carrying, each carrying a baby or a child. You know, it was emotional for me. It's sad. 
he who had over the years remained idled and denied basic and vital services, including health and education, with many traveling to Kerama and into Port Mosby to seek better services. It is everyone's hope that vital services will flow in now that there is a road link. Member for Kikori, Sorayoi, apart from opening the road, also delivered vital projects and assistance to women and youth groups in various villages. These included opening of rural markets, handing over of sewing machines, chainsaws and rice milling machines. Bottom line is road is important. Our people uh, need road. And you can see that we have a fertile, fertile land where we can grow and we can take our cash crop to the market and then our economy. Uh, and uh, this road, uh, it, it means a lot. Mr. Yoe says he was challenged by the poor state of infrastructure and services in the area and has embraced the Ihu Special Economic Zone. He believes the introduction of the Special Economic Zone will help to address and improve the situation in Ihu. Development is forthcoming with the project on board. When we come back, East New Britain mourns a founding father of the province. Sir Ronald Tavoy is honored and remembered for his contribution to building a great people. Senior statesman and former Premier of East New Britain, late Patuana Sir Ronald Tavoy, passed away aged 88 on December 25, 2021, in Port Moresby after battling a long illness. Late Sir Ronald was well known in his home province as a prominent leader and respected senior statesman in the country. Member for Rabaul Dr. Alan Marat said the late Sir Ronald's purposes and leadership were outstanding because he actually lived them out. Senior statesman and former Premier of Eastern Britain, late Patwana Sir Ronald Towe, was born on the 17th of February 1933 in Rabaul District. He was the fifth of nine children. His early days were centered on education, religion, and agriculture being his main principles in life. On those principles, Sir Ronald continued to encourage young people to strive to achieve good education and to be good leaders and be self-reliant. Sir Ronald was a trailblazer on many fronts. He held many job titles, a teacher, a magistrate, a commissioner, a premier, a businessman, a community leader, a church elder, and one of the country's most senior statesmen. Sir Ronald was among pioneer leaders such as the late Sir Paulus Matane, Sir Rabbi Namaliu, Martin Tovadek, Vin Tobining, Oscar Tamur, Damien Karako, and Sir John Capitin, who devotedly worked hard to build the foundation of East New Britain to become a model province. However, since then, the progress of development in most sectors has become stagnant or worst case scenario, deteriorated to what it is today due to lack of care and vision. Late Patuana Sir Ronald continued to enjoy his retirement from active public service life until he passed away on Christmas Day, December 25, 2021, after battling a long illness. A special funeral service for the late statesman was held at the Reverend Sioni Kami Memorial Church, Boroko, Port Mosby, on January 12, 2022. Member for Rabaul, Dr. Alan Marat, said, Late Sir Ronald's purposes and leadership were outstanding because he actually lived those purposes out. The next day, the casket of late Sir Ronald Towe was flown home to East New Britain. After the break, the late Sir Ronald is welcomed home and given a final send-off fitting for a man of greatness. Sir Ronald Tavoy's passing has left a big vacuum and a legacy that would be hard to fill and emulate. Sir Ronald was described by many as a man of integrity, 
standard and strong discipline. His casket was flown home on January 11th. His family packed the Tokwa airport to receive him. Upon arrival at Tokwa airport, family accompanying the casket of Sir Ronald Tokwe were received at the Termac by a combined police and correctional service guard of honor, followed with a display of traditional Tolai chief welcome rituals before they were received by a member for Gizal Delta Wong, East Britain Provincial Administrator Wilson Matawa, and PEC members among grieving relatives. The procession then continued through Kokopo Town via the Burma Road. People lined up on the roadside to show their last respects to one of the greatest leaders of the province. The ceremony at the Malaguna Technical Secondary School Hall continued with Minister Wong officially heading over the casket on behalf of the national government to the provincial government. Honorable Governor, Honorable Nakus Konga, Provincial Administrator, Mr. Wilson Matawa, Provincial Assembly leaders, on behalf of the Governor General, Sir Bob Dade, and on behalf of our uh, uh, Prime Minister of our country, the Honorable James Marape, it gives me great honor to bring back the body of Sir Ronald Tove and hand it over to our provincial government. With that, thank you very much. The body of Sir Ronald laid in the school hall for a short time while Provincial Administrator Wilson Matawa paid his tribute on behalf of the public servants of East New Britain before Governor Konga handed over Sir Ronald's casket to relatives. As the body has been handed over, our late Patuana, Sir, late Sir Ronald Tawe, our elderly statesman for East New Britain, this afternoon, I, on behalf of the government, I welcome the casket Lady Tinwill, Ronwill, William, and your only daughter, grandchildren, relatives, friends, who are here this afternoon to honor and respect the late Sir Ronald Tugwe. On behalf of all the public servants of East New Britain, I'd like to convey our sincerest Condolence to Lady Tinwheel and the children, the grandchildren, and all associates of our late court. Honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, I will now officially release the body to the wife, the children, and the relatives. After the handover ceremony at Maltec, the procession continued along the Nonga Road to Sir Ronald's village, Ratavul, where he was accorded traditional Tubuan chief's ritual called Tinikin, performed by Tubuans from his own clan of Unatarai. <laughs> The body of late Sir Ronald Towe rested overnight at his Rattaville residence on Thursday. Before the main funeral service, the casket stopped over at the Rattaville Methodist Church of which Sir Ronald was a member and elder. The congregation paid their last respects. Friday 14th January, procession started early morning with Tubuan ritual, a combined police and CS Paul Barrows with Sir Ronald's widow, his children and grandchildren proceeded to the Pilapila Pila Church Hall. The Pilapila Pila United Church Hall along the North Coast Road, Rabaul, was packed with dignitaries, Sir Ronald's former colleagues, government, business representatives, community leaders and relatives. The main celebrant was Bishop of the United Church Nibriton region, the Reverend August Waninara. The famous Wuneiroto Choir Ministry led beautiful renditions of Kono hymns providing divine peace, comfort and inspiration. Sir Ronald's theology was read out by his nephew, Dr. Edward Talwat, while Sir Ronald's youngest son, Ronville, also spoke on behalf of the family. Other condolences were from Sir John Caperton, read out by Scary Palanga, and Pearson Vetuna Talwat's condolences 
was delivered by daughter Beryl. Sir Ronald was described by many as a man of integrity, standard, and strong discipline that demands accountability and transparency at all levels from government, private sector, church, and family. More so, he was a trailblazer on many fronts. Ronald's casket was finally lowered to his final resting place at his family home, Vuna Mill. Sir Ronald's passing has left a big vacuum and a legacy that would be hard to fill and emulate. History was made at Poyu village, Menyama district with the launching of much needed birthing and cleaning supplies. The people of Morabe's mountainous electorate of Nanima Kariba Rural celebrated throughout the day while their village birth attendants cried tears of joy. The proverb, out of sight, out of mind, rings true for the people of Menamia district who struggle to access basic government services like health, education and law and order. The neglect is evident as vehicles carefully maneuver the treacherous mountain tracks of Watut in Bulala district heading towards Menamia. From Lay City, it takes over 10 hours to reach Menyamea by road, a grueling journey that is not for the faint-hearted. It therefore comes as no surprise that Menyamea's health facilities are falling apart. Their limited medical consumables are stretched thin, while most health workers live for greener pastures. On Thursday, the 10th of February, Poyu came alive at the beating of drums and chanting as traditionally attired residents excitedly welcomed a group from the Morabe Provincial Government's Community Development Office. Led by coordinator Silvia Done, the lay team launched the birthing kits that were donated by the Good Samaritan Foundation in November 2001. Donna heads the province's community and learning development section, a vital branch in the MPG that gets little to no funding in Morbe's budget, making it difficult to reach out to the women, youth and marginalized members of the community. However, the jubilant expression on the people's faces made the trip worthwhile for the team as they witnessed the demonstration and distribution of the birthing kits to the village birth attendants. Officer in charge of the Aseki Health Center, Sister Matilda Maborai, showed the VBAs how to use the gauze, umbilical cord clamps, kidney dishes, razors, gloves and masks. Sister Maborai also stressed on the need to wash their hands and equipment with the alcohol solution provided before and after attending to mothers. This kind of assistance is a first of its kind for the people of Nanima Kariba Rural LLG. Village birth attendant and Aseki women's representative Tinola Manas said village health volunteers have been struggling for over a decade to provide health services to the rural populace. Manas has built a makeshift labor ward under her house while another separate bush material shelter serves as the mother's waiting room. Now, Miss Amekim, Emosem, Baby Sakam no leg, Baby Sakam no hand, and Miss Hart and Miss Singatimor, Doctor Bimosa Kamel Pimi, Sandra Timia Sarasim. Three days, four days, Minusaka can go. All picking in Blumis Ankere, Onusaki help him good. Miss Stripper Road, what does a carim you go on the market to store, Mama? Three plus four plus a mass of time for me. A mamma mix him help him. So I can walk and roll all Mamma will box it pay long. All my max it pay long and they also stop the legs like some money. Not like me walk not in a minute. I'm still pimp good. Trango to black picking from here to plus anchor to plus a whole house for month of Mamma three plus around a lot now. It was a common trap of Sanker to black picking. Mr. 
And that ends scope this evening. A kind reminder to apply simple measures to prevent the transmission of the coronavirus. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water, cough or sneeze into your elbow, and exercise social distancing. If you are feeling sick, please stay at home. You can also call the COVID-19 hotline number for more information or assistance. Thank you for your company. Bye for now.